All right, what's up, people? Um, just in case anyone's watching right now, uh, just going to set things up and uh, make sure we've got everyone in the chat and everything's streaming well before we get started. Just going to set the... Okay. I think we're good. Um, just in case you're watching this after the fact, uh, this, uh, this may very well... Uh, uh, not have anyone watching it, which is fine. Um, <clears throat> but I wanted people to be able to join in and, and whatnot if they wanted to see it. So what we're going to do today is we now have our retro pie. If you've watched video one, cool. If not, there should be a link for it in the description. I may have even put a card up. But what we've got here is we've got a series of different things. Um, we've got, you know, I've got all kinds of different systems in here. Uh, such as the Nintendo Entertainment System. And when you click on it, you've got a bunch of games in there. Now, last time when we did it, I only had a list. And if you want a good idea of what the list kind of looks like, so this is like Neo Geo, where you've just got a list and you've not attributed it anything to them. So the first part of this uh, is once you first get the, the, the system set up and everything the way you like it, you'll probably want them to look more like this, where it scrapes for stuff. So what we're gonna do first is show you how to do that. And again, as I've kind of hinted at, this is referred to as scraping. So uh, in order to scrape, it's kind of built into the system already, and I'll show you how to do that right now. Um, but there is another way to do it, which is also ideal. Uh, but all right, so let's go over to the usual scraper and um, let's go into PC Engine. So as you can see, I've got some games in here. Um, I've got this one called Splatterhouse Chrome, which has been scraped, but I have the regular Splatterhouse, which hasn't been scraped. So first and foremost, there are many ways you can delete ROMs from your system, but let's, let's show you one of the easiest ones. If you wanna just select the ROM, I wanna get rid of this. This game actually does not work. So what I can do is I can press select under options. Um, and under uh, edit this game's metadata, you can do all kinds of stuff. You can change what the description is, what the name is, all that fun stuff. But another thing you can do is come over here to delete. If you pick delete, this will delete the file. Are you sure? Yes. And as you can see, Splatterhouse is now gone. So, okay. So what if I want to get a game in there? Well, that's very easy. So we've got Splatterhouse here and we want to scrape for it. You can, you can literally press select and... Uh, um, go to edit this game's metadata and pick scrape right here or alternatively probably the easiest way to do it is if you're on the main menu so let's go back to the main menu you don't have to be at the main menu but whatever wherever you're at you can press start and if you come over here at the very first part of the menu you see scraper so if you press a for scraper you get to pick where you scrape from the games database is um, really the only one that's that's available right in the offset and it's it's very good so i think it's a safe place to do it from um, not only safe in terms of like the health of the files but also safe as in it's probably relatively accurate as accurate as i need it to be for a big retro pie and what you want to do is even if you only want to scrape from certain systems in certain circumstances because this takes a long time you just want to pick first scrape now. Now there's a couple of options. First one is user decides conflicts. This means if it's not quite sure what game it is, it's going to have you pick it. If you turn it off, it's just going to do the best job it can. Filter only missing an image or you can do all games. So you can scrape for every game or only the ones missing an image. Then you can also pick from systems. And right now there's eight selected. It's all the systems that I have, but let's turn off some of them. First of all, arcade, there's a much better place for you can do the arcade stuff. So arcade scraping will be done differently. So I'm gonna uncheck arcade. And then most of these I've done on my own. So what we're gonna do is we are gonna leave Neo Geo. And for now, I'm also gonna take off PC Engine uh, because I'm gonna show you a different methodology with PC Engine. Well, no, we were using PC Engine. So let's, let's keep with PC Engine. I'm gonna pick PC Engine. And then you go, uh, there is also select all and select none, but you would want to select none, but hey. Uh, so you go back. Now I've only got one selected. So all it's going to do is look for PC Engine games or TurboGrafx-16 games missing an image. And as you saw in there, I have two. And I'm using this because I want to show you a couple of things. And then we say start. Now, 
I've already said start. It's going to take a minute, but here we go. The scraping's in process. Now, you'll know if this is working because the scraping in process will immediately start detecting stuff, and it'll show you the game um, and the games to pick from. As you can see on the right here, it just has Splatterhouse. When it looked for Splatterhouse, that was the only game that came up. Makes sense. That's the game I want. But sometimes you'll get instances. We'll, we might see it with the next game, Yo Bro, um, where it's not going to find it, or you know, it's going to have options that are not what I want. But in a perfect world, this is the game you want. Since I've chosen user picks input, it would have done it automatically if I had said no. But since I said yes, I have to tell it. I want Splatterhouse. Now, maybe it didn't find the right game. You can come down here to input and put in something other than Splatterhouse and try to find it. It's been my experience, though, that games database is pretty good. Uh, so it's probably just not in the games database. And there are many games that are not. Um, you can also skip it. If you're like, eh, I'll deal with this game's metadata and stuff later, you can skip it and you can stop, which means you can stop the scraping process. Um, but anything you've already scraped will still be saved and added. But anyway, I know this is what I want, Splatterhouse, so I'm going to pick Splatterhouse. And it's going to uh, add that scrape data to Splatterhouse so that it's now permanently part of my UI in RetroPie. Now, next up is Yo Bro. Let's see what happens with Yo Bro. Okay, see, it couldn't find any games. So one thing you can do, just to test for it, is, well, maybe the punctuation or something has screwed up. Now, this is where you have to have a keyboard attached. And I do have a keyboard attached to mine. By the way, I'm not using the extra camera because it just didn't seem necessary. Um, and we'll delete this. And if you want to be as non-thorough as you want, with the PC Engine library, which is relatively small, just keeping Yo is okay. Um, with larger libraries, you probably don't want to do that, such as like the ZX Spectrum, or God forbid, you do this to like the Nintendo library or the 16-bit libraries or arcade especially. But you probably won't deal with that with arcades. And there is another way to scrape. This is just like the my first scraping in, you know, testing it out, what I can do through the UI. And then you can press B to stop editing, and then you search. So now it's paused again. And I've noticed when it's scraping, it's this weird goofiness of just like, you don't know if it's working or not. But it is, trust me. Um, and sometimes you have to wait for it. And sometimes when either the game's database is down, which happens from time to time, or when you're doing like a particularly large library or a particularly complicated game list, uh, and a large game list for that matter, um, you'll run into problems with this. Uh, but anyway... As it stands, it was not able to find Yo Bro. That could be a couple of reasons. One being the PC Engine is what I've got it set as. We'll deal with how to uh, call your your console something different in a minute. Um, the other problem could be that it's simply not in the database. Either way, I'm not going to deal with it right now, so I'm just going to pick Skip, and it'll say one successfully is scraped, one skipped. And then you press OK, and then you go back, and then you can just close out of the main menu. Now, when I go back into PC Engine, there's Splatterhouse. Splatterhouse looks like Splatterhouse. Bonks was already there. And then Yo Bro, as you can see, is still showing nothing. Um, <clears throat> so that's the easy way to scrape. Now, there is another way you can scrape, and it is ideal for arcade games. So we'll come over here to arcade real quick. You can see I have arcade and I've loaded up a bunch of arcade games. It's got a lot of data on the right here and uh, screenshots. And how do you get those? The games database isn't great for arcades and I haven't seen a whole lot of arcade games uh, in the games database. Like when I tried this on the scraper, they all failed. So what we've got to do is we got to get a little more complicated. And what you're going to need is you're going to need a little bit of UI knowledge, a little bit of, uh, uh, what's up, Strip? Strip's in the chat. Uh, Strip, I'm right now showing how to scrape games, how to add games to your pie list. If you got any questions, let me know. Um, I, I'm definitely monitoring. But, uh, but yeah, so when you want to scrape games, um, there is a scraper that's one, faster, and two, uh, works with arcades, but ultimately it is pulling from outside of arcades the exact same database. So you're probably, as I said, with Yo Bro, you're going to see that I'm still going to have problems finding it because it's just going to scrape the game's database. It just does it faster. Um, one other thing I wanted to show you is, as you've seen with some of these games, uh, here's the Atari 2600. Garfield, the prototype game, there was no box art for it. It's just not going to be in there. Halloween's there, but Halo 2600 also had no box art. It's just not in there. Um, there is a way to manually add scraped games. Uh, it's kind of a pain in the butt, but, uh, but yeah, uh, it, 
it's it's hit or miss. And so you're going to have to kind of accept this as like, it's not a perfect circumstance and you're going to have to do a lot of manual labor for the little bits. So for me, what's the chances that I'm going to look at Atari 2600 and really have a problem with the fact that Garfield's not there, especially when it says prototype? Probably none. When most of them look good, I feel good. If you're really picky, you can go through and delete the games that don't scrape properly and just not have them. Another thing I have noticed just before we get started with scraping and all this stuff is you have a tendency to want to co bring over complete ROM sets. Like with Arcade, I have 110 games and it's only A through D. You don't really, like, it slows your pie down and there can be a lot of headaches with it. So that's where I go. Just be a little more nitpicky. We're getting to this point where you don't want to have everything in there. You know, maybe it is okay that for now I only have three PC Engine games. Maybe it's okay that I only have, you know, the NES Classic Edition list of games right now. Like, it, it might not be a bad idea. And especially if you're scraping and you're scraping manually through the UI, you really only want to do like 10, 15, 20, 30 games at a time because it will take you 10, 15, 20, 30 minutes. So, anyway... But if you do want a way to scrape in a faster method, it's built into your RetroPie image. And uh, the only thing is you're gonna need a keyboard attached and you're gonna have to go into Linux. So let's do that now and I'm gonna walk you through it. All right, first things first. You can put your controller down because you're gonna use your keyboard. So I've whipped out my keyboard. Now we're gonna go into actual Linux prompts. Uh, don't be scared, but here we go. Are you ready? You need to press F4. Or alternatively, if you really want to, if you're a big UI GUI kind of person, you can go to quit and pick uh, quit emulation station. But instead, if you get more user friendly with the Pi, and it's probably a good idea you do, the keyboard shortcut is F4. When we press F4, here we are. We're at what is ultimately looking like a Linux or Unix um, you know, uh, DOS prompt to a certain extent, but it's a Unix prompt. And... What you've got here is right next to the dollar sign is basically what you can do to access Linux functionality. Now, one thing I will show you right off the bat, and we'll deal with this in a second, is if you put in emulation station and press start or enter, it will restart emulation station. You'll be back into the UI. So if you ever accidentally get here and you freak out and you don't want to deal with anything, that is a good way to do it. Don't start pushing random things because remember you are in a Linux setup and you can mess with stuff because you're kind of in, I mean, you're in the RetroPie directory, but you are in somewhat of a root status. Um, all right. So if you want to get into the true RetroPie setup and you need to do this with the scraper specifically, but there are other setup items you need to enter the setup, not through the UI and emulation station, but actually through this prompt. What you want to type in is sudo, which think of that as like, I'm going to give you a command. And then you need the tilde. Now the tilde is based off of the European keyboard, not the American keyboard. So us Americans are going to get a little frustrated. But if you look down at your keyboard, if you hold down shift, and there is like, um, it's like two vertical lines and then there's a backslash. That gets you the tilde in Linux. So just so you know. And then you want to do forward slash, not backslash. For reference, forward slash has the question mark in its shift area. Backslash has the two lines. So you do forward slash and you go retro pi. Uh, type it exactly like this. So P has to be capitalized. Dash setup. And then forward slash again, RetroPie setup.sh. And so what I'm saying here is run the item that is in, and then when you do the tilde, that means this current directory. So which is home slash pi or pi slash home, I think, or home slash pi. It doesn't matter. We'll get to it later. But you're saying run the file that is in from this folder. Go into RetroPie setup folder, go into RetroPie setup.sh, which is a command, it, it is the setup file, and run it. So when we push enter, we will enter the RetroPie setup. Here we go. So here's your RetroPie setup. You can do all kinds of fun stuff here. Uh, you don't want to do retro uh, basic install because that's how you install it and you've already got it installed. 
Uh, you can update all installed packages. Um, if you're having trouble finding certain things that I've got here, like uh, themes and whatnot, because we'll get into those next, I highly recommend you update all installed packages. It will do it automatically, but you need to either have your Wi-Fi preset up, which we can do in the menu, I'll show you that in a minute, or have a Ethernet cable plugged in, which is what I do. Um, but you don't have to be like me, I'm just a wire whore. Um, I also have the Wi-Fi alternatively set up as a secondary. Um, there are configuration tools, RetroPie setup script, all this stuff. I wouldn't recommend playing with a whole lot of this unless you know what you're doing, and we'll get into that later. But one of the big things you can do is manage packages. Uh, not everything comes automatically installed in RetroPie to make it run better. Um, you definitely want to uh, only have packages installed that you need. So if you look here to manage packages, you can also alternatively press P if you don't want to use the arrow keys. We'll go under manage packages. There's a couple of things. There's the core packages. Those are the RetroPie basic stuff. Main packages are the packages that most people use. Driver, experimental. I wouldn't recommend experimental if you're new to this. And then optional packages. And that's where we're going for the scraper. So go to optional packages and you will see a bunch of stuff. This is stuff that may be installed. It may not be. Um, you can install all of the optional packages. I don't recommend it, but you can totally do it. It just takes up a lot of space is why I don't recommend it. And some of these are installed. Some of them aren't. I think it is smart enough to know. And you can even wipe all your optional packages. But if you look here, some of the stuff, um, I don't know if Daphne is automatically in there. That's the laser disc emulator and it works pretty good. Uh, DOS box. There's a couple of other crazy stuff. Um, you can add scum. I don't know if scum automatically is added. That's the serial uh, command utility for Maniac Mansion, which is used with all the LucasArts games. Here's a lot of like SNES, 9X, Stella. These are like the Atari 2600 emulator, the SNES emulator. Obviously, I have them because you've seen me run stuff from them. But if you keep going all the way down the list, there's a bunch of different stuff. Look, there's an MR Boom. Um, I believe there's a Doom one in here somewhere. There's different versions of stuff. You can add Cody. Um, you can add Quake 3 and then you just need to get the Quake files. So if you have like a GOG version or an old disc, you can pull the files you need. Wolf 4, uh, 4 SDL, that's Wolf 3D, I believe. And even Z Doom, which I'm thinking about doing in the future and adding Doom to this um, just to have it. But anyway, as you see down here, there is also Scraper. Now, you will have to install it. Um, but for now, I've got it installed and it shows me that it's installed. You can say, okay and it will go into the scraper menu. Now, do you see where it says update from source? That can update it just in case the scraper got updated. I know it hasn't in the meantime, and I believe it will have install this package on there if you don't have it installed, which you'll wanna do. You'll see some DOS stuff going and then you'll come back to this menu. But what we're gonna do here is to use the scraper, you actually have to come all the way over to this area every time and go to configuration slash options. You'll see it runs it. And then you've got a bunch of options here. And it's like, where do you get the ROMs from? Consoles, stuff like that. The arcade source, uh, which is for your arcade games, you definitely want to use the MAME database. The source for everything else, I pretty much use the games database. It also uh, gives you options. You can have it overwrite or not. It can look for image and, and things like that. Here is another spot where you can update the scraper. And you can choose scrape all systems. This is if you're going to leave it and walk away for a while because it's going to scrape all your ROMs. It is much faster than the other one, but it doesn't ask you about conflicts and stuff. Um, I would say probably for all the ROMs I've got on my system, which is about 500, give or take. Eh, probably not that much, actually. I have more like 250. Uh, in order to scrape them all, it would probably take, especially if it's downloading files and stuff, probably about half an hour. But it's much faster uh, to do all that manually in the UI. It would have taken hours. Um, instead, let's go to chosen systems. I don't want to overwrite stuff that's already there. So we'll scrape chosen systems. And here's all the systems I currently have installed. Now, I think I showed you at the beginning with the Neo Geo, I hadn't scraped it yet. Um, which, by the way, full disclosure, I'm having lots of trouble with Neo Geo getting it to run. I know I have the right files. It's just a pain in the ass. I may not even use Neo Geo. But it's good since I haven't scraped it for this purpose. So we'll go Neo Geo. I'm also going to go to PC Engine just to see if it can find Yo Bro, but it's not going to because we already know it's not going to. Um, also, if I had new arcade ROMs, I would pick Arcade, and it knows to go to the arcade, the MAME database for the arcade ROMs, and then go to the games database for the others. But the idea is to scrape as much data as I can from these two games. So we come down here. Once we've picked them all, I'm turning on and off the asterisk with spacebar, and then you press OK. And we'll watch it go. And as you can see down here, it's added Cyberlip. It's looking for Yobro, Splatterhouse, and all that stuff. 
and we'll wait for it. It'll take just a second. And there we go. The ROMs have been scraped. Now, we won't see that effect for a minute, but as you can see, that was still a lot faster than the UI. And this is probably the preferred method when you're doing large bundles or when you just want to get the most effective scrape job without waiting forever or sitting at your computer. Now, from here, we've just got to back out. You just do a series of cancel, 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 back, 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 and then eventually you get exit, and we are going to exit the RetroPie setup script. When we exit, boom, we're right back at the Unix prompt, or as uh, <laughs> Strip was saying in the chat, uh, something that looks a lot like pro uh, DOS. As I said before, if we want to run Emulation Station, we just run Emulation Station. Another cool thing is if you want to run Emulation Station and you want to like refresh your ROMs or you want to refresh your box art, just going F4 out to the prompt and then rerunning Emulation Station is a good way to refresh that instead of having to restart your whole system, which of course is here, quit, and restart system. A lot of people say restarting the system from scratch is the better method, so... I'll warrant you probably want to do the alternative method, but, um, all right. So now if we go over here to Neo Geo, we see Cyberlip has been added and Cyberlip is like a Contra, you know, uh, a Contra ripoff, I guess I would say, well, not a ripoff, but like, a, it, it it's in the vein of Contra. And again, if you just want to see the problems I'm having, we'll go right here and we'll say, uh, I'll just run it and you'll see it's not going to run, unfortunately. See, I don't know what's wrong. I've got the Neo Geo ROM in there, as uh, people can see, um, which is required to play Neo Geo games. Um, it even gives that it's the BIOS and stuff when you scrape it. Um, and I even have it in the BIOS folder as well. It's supposed to work, and I know I've got the right BIOS, um, but it's, it's not working for me. So I don't know why. Maybe something weird. Who knows? The other thing we'll see is if we go to PC Engine, you'll see my scrapes remain. And it was able to find Yo Bro. So as you can see, that scraper is a little bit smarter. I, I had no idea it was going to do this. But you can see that scraper is a little bit smarter than the main scraper. There are many reasons for this, but whatever. I'm going to just, you know, not look a gift horse in the mouth and be happy that it's there. <laughs> so anyway, if you want my advice, even though you got to go out to like a, a Linux style prompt, the scraper is a great place. All right, next up. This is kind of the base, um, uh, you know, setup you get when you have an emulator. Uh, this is called Carbon. It's the main theme you get with RetroPie when you fresh install it. But let's say you want other themes. Did you know RetroPie can look really cool? Uh, Strip Mahjong says Neo Geo emulation always likes to cause trouble. Yeah, and here's the thing. I own a vast majority of the Neo Geo ROMs on the virtual console on the Wii, and they run at 240p. So... It's one of those things, and most of them that I don't that that are on here, outside of like Cyberlip and Ninja Scroll or Magician Lord and Ninja Scroll and stuff like that, and Nom Seventy Five, I only have a handful of Neo Geo games I really like because the fighting games I think are better set with like the Capcom ones. That's a personal choice, whatever. Some people love the Neo Geo fighters, um, but the Wii was a better place for me. But if you're going to do a RetroPie, yes, you want to figure out how to get the Neo Geo stuff working. As soon as I do, cool. Yes, I've watched many tutorials online. Yes, I've done the GitHub. I've gone to RetroPie. I've looked at all the documentation. I've done it right, but it's not working. I don't know. Anyway, we'll come over here to configuration, which is RetroPie. Okay, now here, these are lots of configurations. And I didn't play with it much in the last video but I will play with it here. So one thing is Wi-Fi. Here's how you add and uh, configure Wi-Fi. Um, splash screens, we'll deal with that soon, which is, do you want a different screen to show up when, you're, when your Pi starts up? You can do some cool stuff. You can even put movies on there. And yes, we will deal with all of that today. You can see your IP address. Um, a lot of people talk about this. If you show your IP, and I'm not going to show it right now, but if you show your IP, you can write that down. And then if you go into Windows and open Windows File Explorer, and you're both on the same network, whether it be the wireless or wired network, which most houses will be, you can do backslash backslash, type in that IP address and have access to your RetroPie's files. Again, I don't really need to nitpick the files, and I like the file manager in here, which we'll deal with when we're dealing with splash screens. Um, but for some people, it's going to be cumbersome, and they like the drag and drop. Whoa, sorry. If you push left and right and these Super Nintendo controllers I've used are kind of crappy, 
I think I'm going to go and use my uh, my 8-bit Doe controllers instead. <laughs> but uh, anyway, we go back over here. Um, there are a couple of different things. RetroPie setup actually takes you to that RetroPie setup that we ran, the sudo retropie.sh. But if you go to run the scraper or various other functions in there, you'll get a little pop-up that says, hey, you need to leave emulation station when you do it. So that's why I like to go into the setup through the actual like root of Linux. Um, he says, it could just be the ROM you've got. Neo Geo seems to have a lot of different quote unquote ROMs that were built for different emulation versions. That's a good point. Maybe I should try a different Neo Geo CyberLip ROM. I am using the MAME.78 uh, library because that's what works best with LR MAME 2003, but that could be a problem. We'll get into the individual emulators in a minute here. And that's another thing I've noticed with Arcade that you'll want to keep in mind. Now, this is RetroArch's NetPlay. I don't deal with NetPlay right, right now, but RetroArch is kind of the emulator that's behind a lot of this stuff. And uh, this can be a good way to do your configurations, but I'm not going to do it right now. Uh, this is the same thing with your Raspberry Config. You don't really have to do anything with it, but this allows you to really jack with your Raspberry once you're far into it. So, okay, over here is ES themes. We're going to deal with this next. And then file manager, I'll show you. This is basically a, a DOS-based, it looks very DOS-based uh, file mover. And we're going to use it in a minute. But uh, this is where you can change your configs for all of your RetroArch stuff. We're going to mess with this in a minute too. Uh, Bluetooth, this is how I'm going to add a Bluetooth controller. And audio is how you can set up your audio. I just do stereo through HDMI, whatever. Uh, I think we saw that in the last video. Um, but all right, here we go. ES themes. Let's say you want a different theme. Now, people always ask me, what do the themes look like? If you look right here where it says GitHub slash RetroPie slash RetroPie setup wiki themes, that's where you can look at the actual themes in person. But let's pick ES themes. Again, you're going to need a keyboard because it's going to be more of that prompt thing. And remember what I said if you see, if you don't see all these options with, with with which with the main RetroPie install you get from the website, you won't have all of these themes. Um, you're going to need to update your packages through the setup, which was go back to the early part of the video where we entered the RetroPie setup, and there was a spot where you can update all your packages. That's what you want to do because if you don't do that, updating your installed themes, update it or uh, yeah, all installed themes or view and update the theme gallery, it's not going to help you. View and update the theme gallery actually allows you to update with the newest themes, which you'll want to do once you've updated your RetroPie package. But And viewing allows you to view the themes through RetroPie, but it's kind of slow and cumbersome like everything else. Um, as you can see, you'll have Carbon automatically installed. I've thrown in a couple others. Let's see which one I threw in. I know I did Comic Book, which is the one I love to use, and I'll show you guys that in a minute. But I, I didn't want to spoil the surprise, um, which is right here. TMNT Turtle Guy comic book. Mad props to TMNT Turtle Guy. I went to go make my own theme and do my own stuff because I thought I was all fancy, do a GH101 thing and whatnot. And this guy's theme is so baller. And especially as a kid growing up, I was so into comic books that I just could not, I could not allow myself to not use this, at least for a while. Uh, but he does all the work, so mad props to him. He's also going to do some of the splash screen videos we'll show you. Um, let's see. I have one other one installed as well. Here we go. It's called, uh, wait, not flat. Where is it? We'll look for the other one I have installed. I forgot what it's called. We'll see it in a minute. Uh, this was, here we go. Zoid. Zoid is interesting. It's kind of like my first theme kind of thing. The guy who made it's really cool, but, uh, I didn't quite like the way it formulates stuff, but we'll take a look at all of them real quick. But this is where you install and uninstall them. So like, let's say you wanted Turtle Pie. You can pick it and it'll go and install Turtle Pie. Here it goes. You can see where it's it's downloading everything. Um, this is what you should see when you want it to be downloaded. Um, my RetroPie is not getting the fastest download speeds, but hey. But there you go. And it's installed now. Now I have Turtle Pie as well. So, okay, once you're done installing the packages you want, you can press cancel again, and we'll go back to the UI. All right, now that we have the themes installed, how do we look at them? You actually don't do it through the themes uh, menu. So let's go back to the main menu. I always like to do it as a starting point, but you don't have to. You press start, 
and you go to UI settings. Now there's a lot of stuff. There's screensavers, what do you want it to do, dim. Do you want it to show your frame rate? If you're wondering if a game's running crappy, you can do that. There's on-screen help, which is the little things that pop up and give you information. Transition styles fade when you go between the stuff. And then here's the themes. Now when you pick theme set, you'll get to see the different ones you've got. So before I show you the grand gestalt, which I'm gonna go with, let's look at Zoid. So when you pick Zoid, you gotta press back before it takes effect. It'll pause for a minute and then it'll load your theme. All right, so if I press start to close it, we can look at Zoid. Zoid has a more, I would say classic theme. You'll notice PC Engine has become TurboGrafx-16. And in the lower right, it gives you some information about the console, kind of looks cool, picks its own way of games, Nintendo. But by the way, I should point out, a lot of themes will just show you PC Engine. I'm gonna show you how to change that. And you'll wanna do that for the benefit of scraping and also the views you wanna look at. And if you were to switch uh, themes. Another thing you'll notice that I didn't like with Zoid is if you look here, this is all German stuff, which means it got its information from a German website, which is fine. Not everything is like that, but I didn't really want German down there. It looks a little odd to me. Here's Nintendo, and you'll see in Nintendo though, it's in it's in English. I, I don't understand it. Neo Geo, what is this show? This show's in English as well. Uh, PC, or Mega Drive has then become Genesis, but as you can see, it shows a bunch of Mega Drive stuff. And if you just want to know what the theme looks like, and even Arcade is very basic. <laughs> but if you want to know what the theme looks like with a per game status, let's go into Nintendo. And you can see, this is another thing I didn't like. The When it's talking about the game, it's a large portion of the lower left screen. I didn't really like that. It gives you a lot of release date info, but the screenshot is really small, like in the grand scheme. And it doesn't really adjust properly for whether it's a Famicom game or it's a, it's an NES game. It's an okay theme, but it just seems a lot a little busy and not exactly what we're looking for. Or at least what I was looking for, but you got to play with the themes to know what you like. Another thing is, if you look at Arcade, this is where it gets really messy. I just, I didn't like the way this thing was showing off everything. It's just a personal preference. Um, so then we'll go to the one I love. So we'll go over here. I think this one's the cleanest and, and my favorite type. He knows he's the best out there, but the TMNT comic book shows his comic book. And if we go back, it will apply it. You will immediately see it's a very striking change. So, okay. So this is what comic book looks like. And you'll see we've got, it just makes everything look kind of like an old school comic book. You'll see Mega Drive is, or Genesis is back to Mega Drive. And you'll see that uh, PC Engine, Turbo Graphics is back to PC Engine. Another thing is, if you look, I really like how this, first of all, the games list is number one. It takes up the whole left side of the screen. It gives just the right kind of box size for various different box arts. We'll see this with Nintendo. Um, and then the, de the, the information on the game is lower right, but it's not too overbearing. And it will scroll automatically if it's really long, as you can see here. Um, actually, I wonder if it has to scroll. Oop, sorry. Um, maybe it scrolls. Oh, wait. Yeah, it does automatically scroll. Uh, I like that for the really long descriptions because you never know what the game's database is going to have on it. And it gives you just enough information. How many times I've played, how many players it's good for, what the reviews are like. But I really like this UI. Um, and again, I'll show you how to change PC Engine to Turbo Graphics and Mega Drive to Genesis in a minute. Um, another thing I like about this is, especially with Nintendo, as you can see, with the Nintendo games and it does the right kind of blow up with the Famicom games. So it's just a cleaner UI. And especially when you have a mix of Famicom and NES, I really like what he's done here. I like it so much that after looking at pretty much every theme first on the website and then trying them out in actual motion, because sometimes they look good on the website and they don't look good in motion. I was thoroughly impressed with this. So this is definitely the one I go for. Um, also, one thing I wanted to point out since I'm looking at Sapporo, if you look down here at Sapporo Sumo, um, which is one of the games, uh, it's Sumo Bun or whatever, that's uh, that's actually in uh, the Famicom Classic Edition. That's what I've done here is put all the NES and Famicom Classic Editions in here. And you'll see Super Mario Brothers 1 is missing. I guess I forgot it. Um, if you see all these question marks, that's when it's Japanese characters. You can always come up to these games. And if you press select, you can go to the game's metadata. And I'll just show you. If you go into the description and come up here and press this, and then if I go over to my classic keyboard, I can move over here and actually delete the characters that don't show up correctly or type them in if I want to. 
I think it's sumo with an U. I don't remember. My Japanese isn't good. But let's say it's that. And then you can press B. Um, and then press OK. And then come down here. I'm going to put the keyboard down. Come down here and save and then close this. And as you'll see, there are some still question mark characters. Those are the unnecessary spaces, which I can delete. But if you see here, now I've got, uh, so it's O-O-Z-O-M-O-U. So, okay. Well, I'm a perfectionist, so bear with me. Uh, also, Strip Mahjong says, can we look at the screen filters? Yes, we can look at those. Uh, real quick, if you can clarify while I'm fixing this, um, when you say screen, screen filters, do you mean actual in-game like uh, visual filters, or do you mean filters to the RetroPie UI? I think you mean the emulation filters, uh, which we will definitely look at. So, okay, now that I know what it's actually supposed to say, I can delete the characters we don't know. Whoop. And I know somewhere in here is a character it didn't know, so I'll just put in my own space. And then we press B. Say okay, come down here. You can also modify like your rating on it and all this other stuff. The thumbnail and stuff, you will have to put them in a certain spot and know where to find them. So, and you have to simulate a scan lines and stuff. Yes, that's emulator stuff. We'll get into that. Um, and then you can just say save and you can see now it, it looks right in the description. So you can tweak it. It just depends on how, on how important you think it is. And of course I use Mike Tyson's punch out instead of punch out. But anyway, um, all right, so uh, this is, now we've got this UI set up and whatnot. Um, so the next thing we want to do is you probably want a cool splash screen. So let's deal with splash screens. Now, if you come over here, if you want to set up your splash screen, come over to RetroPie here. And if you come over to splash screens, you run it. We're going to go back to the DOS prompt. Um, okay. So you can Turn them on and off. Do you want to see DOS? What do you want to see as your splash screen? You can even do a splash screen randomizer and it'll pick random ones. Um, but you can choose your splash screen. And there is the RetroPie splash screens, which you'll see here. There's just a handful of them. Um, there's different versions based off of different sizes and stuff. That's the main RetroPie one you see at the beginning of anyone's boot. You can also use your own. And you can see right here, it shows you the file structure, which will be important in a minute. Um... <laughs> strip mahjong says you're damn right uh so we've got home slash home slash pie slash retro pie slash splash screens and i actually made an extra folder called video where i put the video splash screens so you pick those and you can see it finds all the splash screens that are in there i've got the b team so if you want to see the b team podcast intro or i've got a marvel splash screen but let's say you want to add your own let's say you went online yes you can go to youtube you can look up splash screens you can make your own I usually tell people a good splash screen length is between uh, 15 seconds gives your RetroPie the longest period of time it needs to load up. Um, and you can go as long as you want. Some people have three minute splash screens. The only problem is when you're trying to troubleshoot your RetroPie, uh, that's going to be a pain in the ass when you keep rebooting and you have to watch this long splash screen. But what will happen is your RetroPie will just boot while it's showing this video. Um, you want the videos to be in H.264 MP4 format, which is why it's best to grab them, uh, either download them from YouTube using a YouTube downloader or following that. Any one of you out there who make game videos know how to do it. And again, I tried with some, some of my own stuff, but again, and the TMNT guy made a killer Marvel splash screen, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, but you can just pick your splash screen. So there we go. So then it says it's been set. Uh, you can also download new splash screens, but I don't see a whole lot of videos. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so if you want to see, so now that I've added that, um, real quick before we add our own splash screen, what you can do is we can just show you what the splash screen looks like. So if you want to see this cool one, it's a splash screen that resembles the Marvel logo at the beginning of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So what we can do just to take a look at the splash screen is we can restart the system. And let's look at this awesome one. Again, this is mad props to the TMNT guy who uh, I believe is the one who made this one. And then he has another cool one I'll show you that's on my uh, thumb drive. Uh, we're, I'm going to show you how to copy it over from a thumb drive. Uh, you can also do drag and drop in various locations um, and then how to add it. But here we go. So we pick restart system. 
and it'll restart the system and we're gonna get to see this splash screen. So here it goes to green or to, to blue. Please let me know if this screws up my audio. I know sometimes that can have an effect on the hub hog. I'm hoping it didn't. And as you can see, here's the Marvel style splash screen. I think it's very cool. It's very clever, shows off a lot of stuff and it slowly turns into the Marvel thing. Shows off RetroPie. I wanted it to look like RetroPie. I wanted it to show off Emulation Station. And if you look, it's been able to load in the time that we waited for that. Um, hopefully the audio is still good. Let me know. Uh, real quick strip. Um, okay. Sounds still okay. Good. I just want to make sure because I'm going to give instructions next. I definitely want to make sure people can see it. Okay. So that's the Marvel splash screen. It's pretty cool. It's the one I like. It's only about 11, 12 seconds long, I think. So it's ideal for if you're just going to, I mean, that's about how long your RetroPie takes to load up. So it's ideal if you're going to do something like that. But let's say you want to add your own. Again, remember I showed you, you can do drag and drop where you can just uh, do backslash backslash the IP address, access your pie. You want to go into the RetroPie folder, splash screens, whatnot. But let's say you're like me. Let's say you want to do it the old fashioned way. You want to know how to do it through your RetroPie if you don't have a PC handy or you don't want to hook it up to a network. So what I've done is I've taken this pen drive. Remember, it's the pen drive from the previous video. If you didn't see how to copy ROMs over automatically, go check out that video. Um, I did confirm, by the way, if you delete the ROMs from the folders on the pen drive, it doesn't delete them from your RetroPie. It doesn't actually sync up. All it does is add anything that's not already there. But what you've also got is you've got the root, which is when you first open the pen drive, that main folder space. And that doesn't do anything with RetroPie. You can just drop files there. It, it ignores them for right now, unless you access them for the, through the file manager. But let's say you want to copy a video over. So I copied over a much longer Marvel video made by the same guy as this. It's made to go just right hand in hand with this one, but it's a longer video. It's about a minute long and we'll take a look at it in a minute. Let's say you want to add a video. So you've created your video. You verified that it's in H.264 MP4 format. You've named it something you'll recognize, preferably a short name because you're going to have to retype this stuff. Uh, actually, no, you just copied over. Never mind. Um, and you've made it a certain length. This one in particular is a minute long, but you want to make it whatever length you've got. So first thing I'm going to do is plug in the USB drive to my RetroPie, which I've done right now. Saw the blinky lights. It's got nothing to sync over, so it's not blinking anymore. Uh, one thing I also noticed is if you've put a lot of ROMs in different folders, you will definitely want to... Oh, and you know what it's going to do? I think it's going to add the Splatterhouse Chrome. Maybe not. Um, but what you're going to want to definitely do is uh, make sure that you wait for all the blinky lights to be done. But from here, here's how we do this the old-fashioned way. We'll go over to RetroPie, and we're going to go to the File Manager. And Strip, here comes your DOS from a long time back. This is like early pre-Windows UI. So here we are, okay? <laughs> and you gotta realize like down at the bottom of the screen, those are the F keys. So F1 does help, F2 does a menu, F3 does view. Alt will go up to the left file command options, blah, blah, blah. You don't have to use any of those for what we're about to do. So, okay, I'm using the keyboard, no mouse. You can hook a mouse up. I don't think it does anything in this file folder. And where we're at is if you look in the upper left, you see it says in the gray box slash home slash pi. That's the file folder we're in. So if we do double dots, this is DOS based uh, or kind of DOS based. I, I think it was utilized in Linux and Unix as well. Now we're out to just the home folder, which all we've got is the pi folder. And if we go out again, now we see a bunch of stuff in the, the root directories of your retro pi. And one of the areas you can go to is media. This is media that's attached. And if you go to media here, you can see there's now USB. And if I go to USB zero, bam, look at that. This is what's on my, uh, my USB drive. In fact, if we go over here to RetroPie, you can even see stuff. You go over here and you go into ROMs. Look, like here's the arcade ROMs that I've put on there. You know, so it's, it's, it's literally looking at my USB drive. And from here, I can copy and move and whatnot. So the one that we've used is uh, Marvel Splash. That was the one you saw in the beginning, I think. God, I hope that's the right one. Actually, here's how we'll check it. Sorry to go uh, back and forth, but here's how we can get all the way back over here. So what we can go from here is from here we go to Home, then Pi, then RetroPie. And over here, splash screens. And then remember, I put it in the video folder. And I have Marvel Splash. So, okay, there we go. So what I want to do is go back and instead do the comic book slash one. So we'll go all the way back to 
media USB zero. And uh, here's comic book splash. The only reason I, I noticed that was it's a much smaller file, so it must have a much smaller bit rate, but whatever. All right, now down here at the bottom, you can see F6 would be an actual remove and move, so it like it's like copy-paste, but I'm just going to copy it. Let's leave it on the pen drive for now. So if I press F5, it copies it, and it says, where do you want it to go? Uh, if you use the up and down arrows, you can move back and forth. Right now, you can see I'm following links. If you press up from there, you are to the home slash pi. And then if I press the right arrow, it turns black. So that allows me to add on to this. So home pi. And if you don't remember the file folder structure, it's retro pi. And then forward slash splash screens. And then video. And then we come down here and we press OK. And you can see it's copying it over. And then it should be over there. So let's go take a look and see if it's there. And you might have to write down some of these things if you don't uh, have them memorized like I do. Obviously, I've done this a lot. You go to home, pie, retro pie, splash screens, video, and Yahtzee. Look, CB Splash is there. So, And there's the B team, and then there's Marvel Splash. So there's the comic book splash screen. Okay, so now it's there. It's in our splash screens folder. So now the splash screens will be able to see it. So with this done, we're all good. If you press F10, if you look at the bottom, that will quit. Boom. And we are back to emulation station. Now a good process to do is now that you're done utilizing this, especially if the light's not blinking, you want to unplug your USB because every time you plug in the USB, it's going to try to sync and mess with it and stuff like that. And you don't necessarily want to do it. But from here, we can go over here to splash screens. And of course, we're back to DOS <laughs> or the this stuff. Choose your splash screen, your own extra splash screens. And now you'll see we have CB Splash in there. Um, so I'm going to pick that. And it, it's now changed it. And then if we re restart RetroPie, we're going to see a different splash screen. So let's do it. Four pies, here we go, and boom. So now this is the one that goes specifically with this comic book theme. It's kind of cool, a little more dynamic. It brings the comic books to life in arcades, which I kind of like. And it's got like the Marvel style stuff. This guy's amazing. Like, mad props across the board. And if you're looking, there's little tears. I think that's supposed to be like the tears of the comic book or part of the filter. Kevin Thuringer. But you see, it's like a much more thorough, really slick looking thing. You know, it's uh, a lot of people really dig it. It's it's very adventuresome and things like that. But anyway, that's how you customize your splash screen. And again, there's easier ways. Did you see in the splash screen thing? You can download stuff. You can just use images. If you just want an image to show on the screen while you're waiting and things like that, it can do that as well. You can set how long it is and stuff like that. But you can do a lot of cool stuff. And yes, there's a massive glut of splash screens on YouTube. Um, just look up RetroPie splash screen and you will see a ton of them. The sky is the limit with those. So, okay. So now we've done those things. Now let's get to the next part of the UI. Let's get this filthy mega drive away because we're Americans, damn it. And we're going to make it uh, the Genesis. Um, this, you actually have to change uh, the settings. Um, and give me one sec to find that information. Here we go. So if you're from the United States and you want a Genesis instead of a, uh, um, instead of a mega drive, here's what you need to do. Oh, you need to create a file. Okay. Okay. So I think we're going to have to go play with the emulation station stuff, uh, in the config file. So. Let's go over here to the config file. 
configuration editor. And let's see here. No, we're not configuring the emulator. Um, and let's see. RetroPie config. Manually edit all configurations. Okay, here we go. And let's see. All platforms config. I might not have it here. I might need to look elsewhere. This I haven't jacked with before, but I don't mind jacking with it now. Okay, so let's go to the file manager and see if this even exists. All right, here we go. So we go over here to opt, retropie, configs, all. Then there should be a platforms.config and I don't see one. So we've got to create it. Yeah, you ready for some craziness? We're going to create it. So here's what I'm gonna do. Exit out of here. And we're gonna go to the computer. We're gonna do this on the computer. So bear with me for a second. It's not gonna be hard. All you need to do is use notebook and a USB drive. So, okay. So, but I am gonna play around with adding some stuff to the screen. Um, all right, so come over here. I'm going to start Notepad. Oh, it's under Windows Accessories now, isn't it? Blah. Windows Accessories, Notepad. Okay. And let's throw it on the screen just so you guys can see it. Okay. So here's Notepad, if you wanna see, there's me right there. Okay. So what I wanna do is, according to this, I want to write a thing that says, Mega Drive theme equals Genesis, and then Mega Drive platform equals Genesis. That's what it says I need to do. Um, I'm just checking the spelling and everything. Looks good. We also need to do this with PC Engine, and I think it's gonna be in the same folder, and I think it's gonna be a similar kind of thing, so I'm gonna look into that real quick. Uh, here we go. You will want to create the same thing and you want to say PC engine equals, whoop, not equals, PC engine underscore theme equals TG16 and PC engine underscore platform equals TG16. By the way, this is, this is all in the GitHub. It's not, it's not difficult. So, okay. Okay, so now what I wanna do is I wanna save this file. So file, save as, and I'm gonna pull up the window now, now that I've typed this up, we're gonna, we're gonna change what window this is showing. All right, and what I wanna do is, I'm gonna just pop this on the desktop, not in my documents where it wants to save. 
and I'm going to change it from .txt to .all or to all files. And then what it wants me to name it is platforms.cfg, platforms.config file. Okay. And then save. All right. Now, if all looks the way I think it does, it's disappeared. And it has. Okay. Okay. Next up, we need to copy this over. So, how are you going to do that? Same way you did with the uh, RetroArch video. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Uh, I just... I'm not going to go out of the way to show it to you on the... Uh, on uh, the computer. But what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take that platforms.config. Well, I guess I could, it doesn't really matter. Why not? Okay, so what I've done here, is I've plugged in my uh, USB with the RetroPie stuff. I'm just gonna drag that platforms.config over, as you can see. And it's just in the main thing where my other splash videos were and stuff like that. And then I'm done. And then I just want to eject it. And uh, and then I can do everything else from the RetroPie. So we will uh, we will do that. That's the exact same way you do the splash screen stuff as, uh, as I showed you earlier, uh, how you get the videos onto there. So now let's move over. We're back over to the RetroPie and I'm gonna plug in the USB. Waiting for the blinky lights to go. Looks like we're good. Okay. So go into file manager. And for the record, I don't know if this is going to work, but <laughs> we'll sure try. So, um, all right. So what I want to do is I want to go over to... media usb I get the platforms.config file i want to copy it with f5 and i want to move it to you can type this in again this is on the github opt slash retro pie slash configs slash all Just checking it, opt, retropie, configs, all. Yep, and then I wanna say, okay. Now, if I go over here, I now have platforms.cfg. So now it's in there, let's see if it works. F10 out. <laughs> I doubt it's gonna work right away. Like, I think I have to restart in order to see this. But we'll check. Yeah, okay. Um, we should probably restart. Uh, we're gonna need to do that anyway. I'm gonna change the splash screen. Eh, maybe I should keep the splash screen at the... No, because the Marvel one takes a long time. Uh, we'll do a quick one. The Marvel splash, okay. And we'll reboot and we'll see if this worked. That looks goofy. Hopefully everything still sounds fine. Let's see if it fixed it. It did not. Hmm. Unless he hasn't built anything for it. We can test that theory, actually. But I'm betting that's not the case. I'm betting he thought of that. 
change it to carbon. Nope, it's still Mega Drive. Huh. Wonder what's up with that. Okay. Well, we'll just put that on the list. See what uh, how I can fix that. That'll go with the Neo Geo for maybe part three. I get the feeling this is going to be an ongoing process. <laughs> but uh, so far, so good. So that's where we're at um, now. Uh, what you wanted me to get into strip was some of the settings features and whatnot. A lot of that stuff can be done into in the UI. So let's start with a couple of things. The first one is let's start with um, with arcade. Arcade is different than most of the other ones. As you can see, it had a different way to scrape. There's also various different things in the way arcades kind of work. So let's pick something. Oh, where's Altered Beast? Okay, Altered Beast is one of those ones that works rough in one uh, emulator and not in another. Um, so we'll go with Altered Beast and we will start it up. Now, you'll see right here, you can press a button to configure it. That's the first thing I wanna do. Now, my default emulator is LR MAME because that's where most of them work. Um, there are certain games the sega uh yeah the sega 16 games being definitely one of them where it's better to use a different emulator um i guess i could show it off first but uh apparently this game runs like garbage on here so let's see what happens and of course it runs great <laughs> i love it okay just in case you want to uh, make any changes, those of you who have used MAME before know that pressing tab actually takes you to the MAME setup. And I'm, I'm pleased to say that everything's still in there. And if you go under input, this is the general input. Uh, this means for every game, you can change stuff like the graphics, the on-screen display, where to save snapshots, what uh, your UI uh, players are, um, any cheats. And then here you can see first player start is Retropad 1, start button. And then coin 1 is Retropad 1, select button. And these are the buttons for service, tilt, and then up, down, left, right on Retropad 1 is how you do up, down, left, and right. And then button 1 can be B or mouse. Button two can be left alt and things like that. And it's it's set up for all the buttons you can possibly think of. And this is where you can set up your general settings for name. You wanna be very careful pressing enter and changing these things because it wants button inputs afterwards. So when you press enter on something, you're going to get button inputs. But if you go back to the main menu, you can also change the input of this game. If you don't like the way this game's set up, you can change it. So that's just something to think about. You can change dip switches. It'll tell you what dip switches are available and whatnot, like changing the difficulty, lives, things like that. This is true of all games on MAME. I just don't think a lot of people know how to do it. Um, and again, yeah, let's see if you get game information. It'll tell you what's there. It's a 320 by 224 game. That's why it's in full screen. Um, I will give credit. 1080p is not a true 224 or 240p um resolution that's ideal which is why you'll notice it doesn't quite go to the top and the bottom with uh with the graphics and then there's obviously bars on the left and the right i think you can in the input area i think you can stretch that out i just never would um no you know what you have to do you have to go into the config file and set it um but uh but yeah i i, I don't want to do that so turn to the main menu um but with that in mind, if we're just having fun for a second, we can uh, start the game up. Rise from your grave. And Yahtzee. I am... Oh, see, I don't know if it does work right. The hit detection seems a little off, doesn't it? 
This game does not seem to be working correctly, does it? Okay, I had been told this game doesn't work correctly. Now we're seeing it in the flesh. This is a goofy little thing. Power up. I've got something floating around my head. Okay, if you push start and select, you exit the game. So, yeah. Nope, that LR meme is not a good place to play. So instead, we'll go to Altered Beast. And we go to Select Emulator for this ROM. So I have to pick up my keyboard. So you go to here and there's different ones and memory serves. FB alpha is actually the one that apparently works better. Actually, let me go back. Yeah. Okay. LR MAME was the default. FB alpha apparently works better with altered beast. So for this ROM, that's what it is. Also, this is where you can change your video modes and stuff. You can actually change the resolution that it renders at and things like that. I'm not going to mess with that. I like things to look the way they were supposed to look, but anyone can if they want to. And then you can either exit without launching it or you can launch it. Another thing I've noticed with MAME is sometimes you have to launch the game once and then launch it again. How do you know those tricks? Look in the video description here. I will have the links to the two spreadsheets for FB Alpha and LR MAME, which kind of give you compatibility notes. But the reality is, is with these different emulators, you just try them all and see which one works the best. MAME for all can work for some of them too. Um, but uh, this one, I believe FB Alpha is the one you want to use. So let's see if it's any better. Whoop. And FB Alpha is not even working. Fantastic. Okay, got to look into other things for that. I guess I wasn't that lucky. Um, come on. There we go. All right. Let's see. Let's try MAME for all. Let's see if that works. Why not? We're going to exit without launching just because we set it up, and then we'll see if it works. Maybe it won't. Who knows? Okay, here's MAME for all. As you can see, it's not as sharp. It's a little blurry. It's like it renders at a different thing. This looks a little more akin to the uh, the Sega Genesis version, or not the Sega Genesis, the Xbox version. Let's see. Tab still gets us to where we want to go. And, oh. And if you look, it hasn't set up for any of this stuff because yep this is for joy axis and stuff but it hasn't been set up so what we can do with that is we'll come over here um and actually let's set up the general input so we've got it for the future so here we go We'll go here to one player start. And then we'll go over here to coin one. Mm hmm. Player one up. Player one down. Player one left. Player one right. It looks like it's mostly pre-set up, but player button one, button two, button three, button four, button five, button six. And you might have to change this time and time again. Who knows? And the rest of it I'm pretty good using as just keyboard stuff. And then with that, we can return to the game. And let's see if it works better. Ooh, the sound looks... Sound ain't great. Ooh, but you know what? It does run a lot better. So this is just a sneak peek at the, the arcade tweaking you're going to have to do. And yeah, the sound sounds goofy. So there's different stuff. Um, 
to do as you tweak things around. But this is why people can justifiably get a little annoyed with, uh, with this stuff. I should also point out that you have to press escape instead of uh, exit or, or start select on the uh, control pad to leave the game. You'd have to set that up in the menu as well. But for the most part, um, these joysticks suck. Or these, these little game pads suck. Um, but like if you were to play, oh, let's, let's find something easy, quick and easy. Probably nothing much more quick and easy than 1943 Kai. Normally it's just going to run LR MAME 2003. Everything's pre-configured. Blah, 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 blah. Come on. You got the nice sharp graphics that are scaled. And you're ready to rock. Um, and the game runs great. And all is happy. And you don't have to worry about anything. Okay. You didn't come here to watch me play MAME games. Okay. So, um, so that's Arcade. Let's go over to another one that I ran into right away, which you'll definitely want to do, and it'll show you kind of how to hit the config menu, is let's go to Genesis and Mortal Kombat. So it's going to start running the emulator. Again, I have it set to just run as it's supposed to. I think. Mm, I might have it in full screen mode from the last time, which is bad. But, uh, and just to show that this, this can actually work. A, B, A, C, wait, A, B, A, C, A, B, B, wait. Ah, okay. Well, I'll do it this way. Down, up, left, left, A, right, down. Wait, down, up, left, left, A, right, down. Um, all right. So if you press select and X, this is where you get to different menus. Um, and you'd think settings, but actually you want to go to quick menu. And here's where, if you go into controls, you can set up what kind of, uh, no, that's the device. That's the pad. That's the controls. That's not what I'm looking for. Maybe options. Here we go. You can see now it's set up for a six button pad, but by default it's set up for a three button pad. Um, so that can be a problem. Um, but if you wanna know how to get to six button pad, there you go. Um, the other thing you can do is, if you come over here to options, get the region, FPS, things like that. Um, and then over here to settings, video, this is where we can see what it's set to. So it's set to four by three aspect ratio. Okay, so I do have it set to the right one. I think I have it set to a custom aspect ratio. But that's fine, that's just tripling up what it's supposed to be. Uh, and maybe 960 by 720 is the standard. Uh, you can switch it to full screen mode. Um, but anyway, and then back to Strip. This is what he wanted to know about. I think it's here, yep, it's down here. And the quick menu might be in options also. Uh, you also can do save states and whatnot, like save state, load and save, and things like that, and your slot. But here's the shaders. Okay. So here are the different shaders they're talking about. So like you can add curvature or ramp or vertical, or you can make it look like Game Boy or various other things. These are the ones that are ideal for SNES and whatnot. Um, these are just the ones that they say will make it look more like what you're looking for. You can do scale, things like that, distortion. Um, and let's see, let's see which one we wanna do. Let's just do CRP, CRT. Um, it's not a vertical game, it's a horizontal game. Let's say we wanna add curvature.
And there you go. <laughs> I cannot get Dullard to work. It's probably this bad keyboard. But anyway. But yeah, so here's the shader. And here's what you're looking at. This is, you know, uh, it's slightly curved, things like that. Um, here we go. Yeah, I guess the best place to find it is in Quick Menu. Go over here to Shaders. Load Shader Preset. We can look at all kinds of cra crazy stuff. Here, we'll do watercolor paint scan line. And apply changes. And this does that watercolor smoothing of the pixels that everybody hates. See that? And as you can see, performance is affected by it. Anyway, I have no idea what A is on this. But yeah, those are the, the different shaders and stuff like that. Um, so that's how you can play around with the views if you want to see that. But uh, let's see. Trying to remember how to turn them off. <laughs> Guess you can do it that way, but that's not the way I really want to do it. Hmm. And then there's the normal game back again. I guess that's the way to do it. And then if I do want to do shaders, you just load a shader preset, such as we'll go back to the curvature one. And then if you apply changes, there it is. And then it's back. So anyway, did that answer your question about the emulator stuff uh, strip? Hopefully it did. You can do that with any of these. Just remember, select X um, on a controller is how you get those to go. Um, and I think that's going to conclude this session. But by this point, your retro pie is looking very professional. It's looking very much more sleek. You got a lot of cool things going for it. Um, oh, I forgot. We've got the new Star Fox 2. Forgot to scrape for that. Let's see if it's in there. Here, we'll go to the options real quick. Let's just see if it's in there. There it is. I don't know if they've updated it. They they haven't. But at least they'll call it Star Fox 2. I called the other one. You need to be careful when you're using the two different Star Fox 2s uh, because this is the new one from the uh, from the NES. Oh, there it is. Look at that. That's the new one from the SNES Classic Edition. And then this is the prototype one. I think the only reason I've got that old screen art is because this hadn't come out yet. So that looks really nice, but most people aren't going to be able to do that. <laughs> But anyway, um, all right. So with that, uh, this is Fred. I'm going to call it a day. I don't know quite why I haven't gotten the right systems in there. I'll have to look into that. And I will test out Strip on that kind of stuff. If you have questions, let's do RetroPie Session 3 in a couple of weeks while so I've had some more time to play with it and load up all the ROMs I want to and jack with the arcade stuff. But just on the docket for next time, let's figure out how to first and foremost get um, PC Engine and uh, Genesis to work. I don't know why that's not working. Um, 
Let's figure out how to get the Neo Geo to work. Let's figure out what's going on with that other emulator that I couldn't get to work. And um, let's see if there's any more things. If you got any questions, again, contact GamingHistory101.com and I'll do it in the next session. But with this, you should be able to create a pretty baller retro pie and be ready to go in. What are we talking about here? The first video was about an hour long. This one's running an hour and 20, so two and a half hours, one afternoon. You should be good to go. Um, maybe three or four if you're going to add in the learning process and whatnot. But hopefully this helped you out. Uh, and with that, and, and, and allowed you to know what, how to customize and everything. I wanted to load those emulators so you knew how to customize things. Um, then uh, other than that, uh, some people have asked about different keyboards from my, or, or different inputs. From my understanding, um, Warham was saying, I don't think you need a driver. I think it's just plug and play with the Xbox 360 wireless dongle. I know wired controllers are fine. It's plug and play Bluetooth with any of the DualShock 3s, a Bluetooth controller, the 8-bit DOE controllers, a DualShock 4 controller. You just got to look at how to sync it up um, and, uh, and various other things. Um, but yes, I hear the Xbox 360 wireless dongle and possibly even the Xbox One wireless dongle work plug and play right out of the box. I even tested it out with my PlayStation 2 Street Fighter 2 15th anniversary arcade stick. It's my favorite arcade stick. It's baller. It works great. Um, I had a, a PS2 to USB adapter, um, hooked it up to this, set up the input parameters, and it worked just fine. So this is a cool little machine for 75 bucks and a lot of time and research. So anyway, keep up the good work. Hopefully this helps. And uh, until next time, this is Fred Ross saying peace out.